If you've ever built a website in Divi, you're probably familiar with the jumping header. If you have no idea what I'm talking about, I'll show you in a minute. My name is Michelle and I release weekly videos on marketing websites and all things design. Today I'm talking about the Divi theme and specifically the header. So if you've ever used the navigation that comes straight out of the box and you start to make adjustments to things like the logo height or even the height of the navigation, you get this weird effect that makes it look like your content is jumping from one location to another. It's super annoying, but fixing it is easy. And all you really have to do is build a custom header. So I'm gonna show you how to do that. Let's get to it. I'm gonna show you some examples just using a dummy website. This is just something I created, it's not real. But in order to talk about the jumping header, I need to show you what it does. So. When I refresh a page or go to a new page, you're gonna see this jumping effect. So if I click on services here, and you might not have saw it right there, but if I refresh the page, you can see that it's taking a second right there to, ju it jumps. What's happening is there's like a half second delay in loading the CSS. And so because of that, it's creating this effect where your content is moving up and down. Like I said, it's super annoying after a while. So you might wanna know how to fix it. So currently I'm using the just native navigation. If you wanna know how that gets changed and altered, if you go up to your admin bar up here and you click theme customizer, this is generally where you would alter the navigation. You would click on header and navigation. You could do primary menu bar, and then you've got the option to adjust the menu height. So how tall do you want the menu to be? I think I had it at 90, doesn't really matter. If I adjust the logo height of like how much it fills the space, this seems to be what actually creates some of the issues because if you were to just use this as all of their defaults and not make any adjustments to the sizing, it didn't really seem to affect the content much. Once you start playing around with it, it seems to cause all the issues. So there is a better way to go about building your header and you have a little bit more of a customization opportunity with it. So I'm gonna show you where that's at. I'm gonna close out of this, we'll just say okay. And then I'm gonna go back to the dashboard and then I'm gonna click on Divi and Theme Builder. So our Theme Builder, this is pretty neat. We can actually build global elements. So we can build that global header, we could build a global footer and it's gonna show up on every single page. So the first thing I would wanna do is click on add global header. Now this is for the default website template. So this is gonna be for every single page on your site. If you had individual landing pages and you wanted to be really specific about the different headers, you could always add a new template. And then you have the options to choose specific pages if you want to, children of specific pages. You could do you know, all of your blog posts, any of the archive pages. You could do 404 pages, search results you have your options to customize anything. But for right now, we'll close that, we'll click add global header, and then I'm gonna build the global header. So this works just like the Divi theme builder works anywhere else. So I would need to add a row and I have my section and then I'm gonna do a content section. So the module that you want to find is the menu module. So I will click menu. And then I've got mine set for the primary menu and that's what I've called it in my menus section. So I'm gonna hit the green check mark there. We can see that it's not so stylized. It needs a little bit of love. So in order to make this easier for you to see, I'm gonna give this a color. I'm probably just gonna turn this background of the section like a light gray. So let's see, let's see. We'll do something super light just so that you can see what's going on here. I'll click that check mark and then let's make some more adjustments to this menu. So right off the bat, I can see that there is a background that's white. I don't really love that. I'm gonna turn that transparent. And then let's address some of the fonts and the menu text. So I'll click menu text and then I think I want everything to be all caps. I think I like that more. And then I can adjust the color of it if I want to. So I could go black. So that definitely makes it a lot darker. 
Of course, you could choose any color. You can put your hex color right there, or you could have your brand colors preloaded. So anything like that, we can adjust the menu size of the text. So if I want it to be a little bit bigger, that's cool. You get all the adjustments of letter spacing, line height. You could do shadows if you wanted, text alignment, all this fun stuff. Let's go ahead and add the logo because I kind of want it to be similar to the navigation that we had. So I might need to go to the content and then choose logo to adjust that there. So to add my logo image, I'll just click here and we'll choose this guy and then we'll hit upload an image. So now we can see that my logo's there. It is, however, ginormous. So we need to fix that too. So be sure to put your link in there as well, because if you don't, it's obviously gonna be blank. And if you, it's always a good practice to have your logo be clickable to take you to the homepage. So I always recommend putting your URL in this location. So once that's in there, before we hit save, we do need to make some sizing adjustments, like I said. So I'll click the design tab, and then this is where we'll go into the logo. And then we can see, and it's not the logo tab that we wanna to go to, it is the sizing tab, which will have the logo width in there. The logo width and the logo max width aren't really going to affect anything for me. So I need to adjust the logo height. So as I pull this down, it definitely gets smaller. And then we've got some other spacing issues to adjust because obviously we would not want our header to be this tall. So let's go and do a few more things. I think I would rather have the text be right aligned so that it's filling the content over. There's no rule saying that you can leave it as is, but I think it looks better if we give it a little space. So I would go back to the menu text. Let's do a right alignment for that, that pulls that over. And then let's hit save on this for now. Let's make some adjustments to the padding. So for the spacing of the section, I'm gonna say maybe we do this really small, maybe five and five, and then that's still quite tall. So I'm gonna make additional adjustments to the row padding. We could probably get rid of the row padding here. So let's just go into the settings, design tab, spacing, and then we'll do zero, zero. And I'll go ahead and put the margins at zero. So now it's definitely a lot shorter. We'll hit save. If I think that the logo is still a little too big, I can always go back into the module and make some further adjustments. Again, that's the sizing tab. I'm just trying to get this to feel like it would be something that we would use. Okay, I'm gonna hit the save changes, but before we leave, you really need to make sure that you're previewing this on all device types. So I'm gonna click this little purple button at the bottom and then we need to see how it looks in tablet view and in mobile view. So not too bad. You could probably adjust the logo height you know, it, it could be a little bit tall for mobile view. So if you're not sure how to do that, let's go back to the module settings and then we'll go back to the sizing. So our logo height, let's enable the device type there. We're gonna go to phone. And then for our phone, we can just scale this back a little bit. So that's a little bit smaller. And then if we needed to add more space, if we thought that it needed more space, so a little bit more padding on the top and the bottom of the logo, that's gonna be controlled by your section. So you can always go back and make any adjustments that you want, as well as all the adjustments to, you know, the colors of your menu. So in your menu text, you can make further adjustments to things of your, like your icons, so your shopping cart color and any search icons that you have, your hamburger menu color. So if you're wanting to know how to adjust those, they've got, different adjustments that you can make for anything. So you can really customize it the way that you want. And so you can also add that secondary menu bar if you wanted to. So let's say that you needed sort of a message bar at the top. So we could add a new section. I'm gonna do just a regular section. We'll do this really quickly because there's a million possibilities that you could do. So I'm just gonna type some text and then so that you can see this, let's make our We'll hit save on that. 
Let's make the background of this. We'll do like purple and then we can adjust the spacing. I'll do zero and zero. We obviously need to do some padding adjustments here. I'll do maybe three and three. We want it to be really thin. And then for our module, which if you can't ever highlight something when you hover over it, you can always go into your layers palette and access what you need. So I'll pop open those text module settings. We just want our text to be white so that we can read it. And then I'll just center align it so that it feels like it could be real. So let's save that. I'll get this palette and then we can just drag this up top so that you could have that announcement bar, kind of like the secondary header that the regular default navigation has. Now, if you wanted to make sure that the secondary header didn't show up when you're in tablet or mobile view, that's a very easy thing to do. You could always go into your section settings, go to the advanced tab, visibility, and we could turn that off. So we could leave it on desktop, but we could disable it on phone and, and tablet if we wanted to, so that when we went, we can hit save, and then we like previewed in the tablet, it grays itself out and it just won't show up. So that's a little trick for you to keep in mind if that's something that you want to do. So if we have our header now, let's save this and see what it looks like on the page. I will click save. We'll click this little X up in the top right corner to exit out. And then right up here, you need to make sure anytime you are making something brand new, a brand new template, a brand new global header, anything like that, you will need to save your changes uh, because if you don't, then they won't save. So we'll hit save changes. And then let's go take a look at what this does. Okay, so we can see our brand new header here. And let's check our services page because that page was really key in seeing that jumping effect. So if I click services, we see that the text took a second to load, but if I refresh it, nothing happened, nothing moved. So it does work in this instance. So really your theme builder is gonna be your friend in this because that's really gonna allow you to control that weird content motion that happens. Now I'm gonna show you one last thing because if we scroll, we can see that this header is fixed to the top of the page and it doesn't scroll with us. If we want it to scroll with us, we just need to make a little bit of an adjustment in our theme builder. So let's head back. We'll go back to our dashboard, Divi theme builder. We're gonna edit our global header here. I'm gonna do something. I'm gonna get rid of this top section because there's a whole nother way that would I would need to handle that. Uh, I'm gonna hit close here. So the adjustment that I need to make is in the section settings. I'll go to the advanced tab. We will go down to position and then it's currently on relative. What I want it to be on is fixed. And then once it's on fixed, I also just wanna choose this top middle location there and I should be good to go. So I'm gonna hit save here and then I'll just save the changes that I made. We will exit with this little top X and you can see this green box says all changes saved. So because I wasn't making something brand new, it's all good to go. No need to make sure I hit save again, but you know, it's always a good practice just to look at that and see if it does need to be saved. Uh, hopefully it gives you a prompt if it if you're trying to leave, but if it doesn't, just, just take a look and see if it does. We're gonna go back and then let's go to our services page. We can see, the reason I came to the services page is we can see that the space that I used to have up there is quite a bit reduced. So one of the things that's happening is basically the first section of content is being just pushed all the way to the top. And so it's the header is now sitting on top of our content. So that could be a major effect for you if you have designed many, many pages and you need <laughs> to take into account that a fixed header using this theme builder is going to affect that. But if I scroll, we can now see that the header stays with us, which is amazing. So if you do need to make an adjustment 
for the spacing of your first section. Really, the only thing you have to do to fix it is pop in a line of CSS. Now, I'm going to have that CSS available in my blog post. So if you're curious about it, you can just visit my blog and get the information you need. If you have any more questions on how I did something, be sure to leave those in the comments below and I can help you out. I hope you found this information helpful. If you did, please give this video a like and subscribing doesn't hurt either. If you have any questions, feel free to leave those in the comments. And as always, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.